Oh, I can finally get some work done. I have some emails to check, books to sign. We had a meeting like five minutes ago. You know what? We are so late to this meeting. It's super important. Kids. How can I? Right. It's very important. They order their own uniforms. Much better. you what welcome to the Nicole Crank show when ugh, I feel a little overwhelmed by people you ever feel overwhelmed by people how about feeling overwhelmed by yourself I know God says that we're all his masterpiece but there's a lot of times I don't think I look like a masterpiece and I sure don't act like a masterpiece I'm telling you what sometimes I found out I have sassy pants I didn't even know I owned the things heat up, life heats up, and suddenly I'm angry, I'm fearful, I'm quiet, I'm shut down, I'm loud, I'm all the things that I don't want to be. And we all work with people, go to school with people, live with people, we're in neighborhoods with people, we get on roads and there's people there too, so what do you do when people are driving you crazy? That's the question that I'm going to get some help answering today from my friend Chad Veach. Chad pastors Zoe Church in California. He also has written four books, including one saying, help, I work with people. And I'm here to tell you, I could use that help. You know what? I think right now you should hit subscribe on that YouTube. You should hit record on that DVR. And let's figure out how to deal with people. Here they come again. Let's go. <laughs> people and um, frankly I uh, I prefer dogs sometimes because like they're nicer which is why I'm really glad my friend Chad Beach who is okay <laughs> he he's the founder of Zoe Church in Los Angeles he's the father of four international conference speaker speaks everywhere in the world and not to mention he has really been an influential part in people's lives like people whose names everybody know so if you're a leader of leaders like that you know how to work with people and i think i think i need help working with people that's the best intro ever I, honestly <laughs> 10 out of 10. That was incredible. I'm being a little zany today because like a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of know what's in there. Right. And there's some medicine. Sure. So we're packaging it right, but to fix a problem, you have to be willing to identify the problem. Ooh, good. And a lot of people write books, but you're writing a book that you just have this, you know, born with and then developed gifting. Right. In this area that has reached a, a real pinnacle point. It is a privilege. Yeah and an honor to lead anyone. They say the average person will impact or influence 70,000 people in their lifetime. So most people, when we say the word influence now, we think of an Instagram influencer. Yeah. But the reality is that the stay-at-home mom yeah. has crazy influence. Yeah. The person that thinks they have no influence is impacting 70,000 people. Wow. And I think the more you understand your influence, yeah. I think God gives you opportunities to lead people that maybe you never would have thought, yeah. I'm gonna have influence with this person's life, that the, this principal or this mm -hmm. you know, politician or mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Like, I never thought I could be in a space to impact their life. You know, like there's information in here that I am learning from today, devouring mm. today. So it's not like, well, I've learned from that book. No, I'm learning mm. um, from some of the things you said. And like, so the first part of the book is about how to get everybody else to do what we need them to do, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no! What if it was? <laughs> yeah, right, right. I mean, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, I think the, fir the first part of the book is exactly what, you know, all of us struggle with, and that's leading ourselves. Yeah, yeah, it's like, what's so crazy is like, the gap between who I am mm -hmm. and who I want to be mm -hmm. is a pretty wide gap. Mm -hmm. And all of us are trying to close that gap. How do we lead ourselves? 
I think you can't lead someone that you don't love, so I gotta love myself. Whoa, 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 whoa. okay, you really flew through that because that's huge. <laughs> You can't lead somebody you don't love. Yeah, how could I expect to have influence over someone unless I care about them? Well, I can't influence myself well, yeah. lead myself well, if I don't love myself. One, one of the chapters we talk about this, 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 this chapter is called The Greatest Investment Ever. Mm. And we talk about LeBron James. LeBron James invests annually $1.25 million into his body. One point, that investment mm -hmm. has garnered an insane empire mm. worth now billions. Yeah. And so you've got to realize that the greatest investment you can make mm. is into you. Wow. You need to invest into counseling, mm. invest into a gym membership, invest into your connect group, mm. invest into your books, mm -hmm. invest into your podcast. Mm. The greatest investment you'll ever make is into developing, nurturing yeah. your God-given potential. What's one of the ramifications if we don't love us? Yeah, the problem, if we don't love ourselves, we'll never love others. Mm -hmm. To the degree I love me is the degree I'll love others. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it this way, love your neighbor as yourself. So a lot of times, the, the, I'm so frustrated and angry and bitter towards others. Mm -hmm. It's because I'm frustrated and ang angry and bitter with myself. Mm -hmm. If I can unlock and free myself mm -hmm. and forgive myself, mm -hmm. love myself. Mo this is my biggest problem. Most people are bullied by shame. Mm -hmm. Shame is such a tyrant bully. Yeah. And he just locks us in. He tells us more of who we aren't mm -hmm. than who we are. Yeah. So that's what I love about Jesus. When we get around Jesus, he tells me who I am. Shame tells me who I'm not. You're yeah. not a good dad. You're not a good husband. You're not a good friend. You're not a good son. You're not a good, and it's just who I'm not. Mm -hmm. When I get around the gospel mm -hmm. and Jesus tells me who I am, you're righteous, you're chosen, you're loved, you're blessed, you're favored, you're graced. And it's like, oh, wow, that's who I am? Yeah. We've got to hear more of who we are than who we're not. And you might be thinking right now, well, no, but it's a fact. It's a fact I'm, I'm not a good dad. I, like, I haven't seen my kids in two years. Or it's a fact. There's a difference between fact and truth. Mm. And what is fact in the world right now and the truth of the Lord Jesus and who he draws out of us, his truth will supersede your fact if we can just lean into his truth. Mm. Ah, you're not going to believe what's coming up next. Shy, timid, afraid. <gasps> I love to play golf, hang out with my wife, hang out with my kids, let them go to bed early so my wife and I can have a discussion together. I like the slogan, best day ever, because I wake up with that mindset, like, I just want to have the best day ever. Let's make today the best day ever. Well, that I'm shy, timid, and afraid. I can show you the world. That's not my favorite song. My favorite song is Classy, Bougie, Righteous. Can I ask you an important question? Do you have some pretty big dreams for your life? I mean, some big goals you want to accomplish, like that scare your head but make your heart excited. Having dreams and setting goals, I don't know, it could be kind of easy. It's the accomplishing them part that some people struggle with. Not anymore. You see, I have this brand new book, and I'm excited about it. I want to give it to you for free. I know, free is the best price ever. It's going to help you get exactly what you've always wanted. You know, one of the first really ambitious goals I ever had, and then I achieved it was to retire from the corporate world by the age of 30 and start living my dream. I started volunteering for my church full time. How many of you know that didn't happen by accident? I had to map out this precise plan to get there. And here's the thing. If you're gonna accomplish your biggest goals, you're gonna need plans to achieve them. If you're ready to stop setting goals and start getting your goals, hashtag goal getters, I want you to claim your free copy right now by following the instructions on the screen. 
I've also created an optional Goal Getters Productivity Bundle for all my friends that want to help apply the message of the book and get the results faster. You get the companion study guide, you get a seven part video curriculum. Oh, you get this master class that is gonna help you get your dreams. When you claim your free book and select this optional bundle, I'll walk you through my simple five step plan to help you get exactly what you've always wanted. love leads to a dog's life. <laughs> Must be true in my life because I got a little puppy here giving me some puppy love. But I think, so three sections of the book. Yep. Me. Yep. We talked about that a second ago. Yep. People. Yep. Um, and I've always said mean people suck. Mm, they really do though. <laughs> they absolutely are just the worst. But don't you think mean people, or let's call them hurt people. Oh. Hurt people hurt people. Mean people, that's what I love about the gospel, really, is it takes the hardest heart yeah. and it makes them soft. Yeah. So you take the biggest jerk and they receive the love of God mm. and it's like, wow, you're so kind now. That's what the gospel can do. And you just totally reframed my thinking because mean people, I was like, <clears throat> and then you said hurt people and I went, oh, compassion suddenly. There you go, empathy. Yeah, whenever someone's mean, I just go, oh, what was their relationship with, like with their father? Who, who abused them? Who abandoned them? We've got to become the wounded healer. Oh, that's good. Because I can't help people yeah. and serve people until I really get that stuff oh. dealt with, sorted, yeah. resolved. So I think we've got to get good at conquering self yeah. because then I'll be free to love people. To love people. So share with us some of the secrets that you've learned. Well, it, um, all my secrets, by the way, are from my parents who are phenomenal with people and just have served people their whole life. I think when we talk about people skills, like what are great, I like the word attached, skills, because we should with people be skillful. So um, manners maketh a man. You know, with my boys, I've got three boys, I'm trying to get them to say please, thank you, eye contact. And every woman their age in the next 20 years thanks you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but opening the door for women, um, um, uh, you know, memorizing people's names. People love to hear their names. Yeah. Asking more questions than you give answers. Okay, you're, you're spitting this stuff really quick. So, I, you know, I don't know if, if you're taking notes, but I'm trying to take notes. So ask more questions. Yeah. Use people's names. Yeah. Paying attention. You know, people skills is about, you know, being good at tennis in conversations. Yeah. I've got the ball, don't be a ball hawk. Hit the ball back. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just teaching my kids and teaching others how to be good with people yeah. because if we don't, what's yeah. the alternative or the law of opposite? Mm -hmm. If we don't get good with people, mm -hmm. we will never experience people's greatness. Mm -hmm. you, you know, l let's just look at Jesus. He's the son of God. He's the Messiah. He's walking on water. He's healing blind people, deaf people, mute people, dead people. He's the, the guy. He's the guy. He, he goes back to his hometown, and they go, Joe's kid? Yeah. <laughs> you talking about Joe's kid? Yeah. Bro, we saw you in middle school. They locked up the greatness of God and shoved it back in it. Wow. When we don't treat people well, we will never experience their greatness. One of the things I love about God is when I really receive the gospel, he bends the arrows of my heart out towards others. People skills is saying, I want more for you than from you. Jesus is the greatest leader that ever walked the face of the earth. How do you not follow a leader? He looks at his guys and he goes, hey guys, we gotta keep going because I gotta go to this cross to die for you. How do you not follow a leader that lives for your success, for your improvement, for your betterment? That's why he's the greatest. And we'll never be great unless we make life about others, not ourselves. He literally told them they're to die for. Yeah, right. <laughs> they, you to die for. So I, I don't know if you're taking notes, but like, okay, so made by greatness for greatness. Yeah. Earlier, wounded people that heal people. So we don't have to be healed people to heal people. Wounded people can heal people. We can be walking through the process. Mm. So we got to take care of us. 
this is how we can get along with other people. But then there's this third thing that's going to take you to the pinnacle. You're not going to believe it. Ooh, pray a lot. Pray a lot. Try to respond in grace, grace and truth. And the reality is you have to kind of know when to tell them to hit the road. So you got to pray about that and just see when you need to say, hey, look, love you. It's not working out. But, but by all means, be so gracious first because we always want restoration. Mm, be patient and don't say everything that you are thinking at that moment. When you pray, you see things from a different perspective. And you may see the thing that you're dealing with from their perspective. Go slow. <laughs> Don't be emotional. And just take it a step at a time. I just love that intro music to that show called Friends. I think it's because I always wanted friends like that. Somebody to encourage me, laugh with me, cry with me, be there for me. We get prayer requests all the time for better friends. That's one of the reasons I started the Circle of Friends. It's a mentoring partnership coaching group. You know, we don't get to be on TV for free. Now, like other shows get paid to be on, we have to pay to be on. And the only reason we're on is because of your generosity and your partnership, and I thank you for that. And a lot of ministries look like you partner with us and therefore we have the television program, but I want you to grow. So we've come up with this whole program. It's a partnership program. It's $27.77 a month. And every month I come to you with special teachings on Zoom. It's private and you can talk live right back, ask questions and dig in. Every single month I bring you my guests. I bring you Amy Grishel, Victoria Osteen, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Elisa Bevere, Cheryl Brady, all of these people. And it's like these coffee conversations, the ones we would have that you wouldn't normally see, but we have them so you can see them and you can be a part of our circle and ask all the questions. Every quarter I send you a free book to help you grow. You get discounts because you're a friend with benefits. You get better seating. How can you become a partner with us in the circle of friends? Go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle. I promise you, you're going to see immense value and you're really going to grow. Join us today. We do this fun segment. Um, this is a test you could fail. <laughs> no pressure. It's going to be awesome. No um, you know, your whole life rides on it, the love of your children, whether or not you stay married. So are you ready for this? Uh, I, I feel the pressure, but yes, I'm going to do my best. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Dogs or cat? Neither. Oh, I'm stunned. Okay. Call or text? Text. Okay. Still or sparkling? Sparkling all day. Late nights or early mornings? Early mornings. <sighs> I'm glad we're not dating. <laughs> <laughs> Beach or mountains? Neither. Okay, where? Pool. All right, all right. <laughs> Big party or small gathering? Big party. Mm, all the people because help I work with people. Glasses or contact? Glasses. <laughs> Passenger or driver? Driver. As much as I love to be driven, I like to be in control. Mm. Last question, the big one. Pancakes or waffles? Ooh, pancakes all day. Yeah. Okay, so Chad Beach's tribe, crew, pack, group. So you guys are like this rat pack running around influencing some of the biggest influencers that might have initials like J, B, or K, K, I don't know. <laughs> but so you run with this, yeah. this group. Yeah. How do you develop a, a group? Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, the reality is, is that we're all on teams. You know, my family is a team. Yeah. My church is a team. My, our staff. We're all on so many teams. And I think this is where a lot of people really go wrong is that we don't know how to play our role. Like I'm just a role player. Life is about getting secure in who I am so I can serve others. And then when I get on the team, let's be honest, this is Satan's biggest problem. Okay. He's in heaven, he's on the team, he's got a job, he wants all the glory and that's, you know, that, that lost him his job. Yeah. What, we gotta be satisfied with our role on the team. Yeah. And if, unless you conquer self, mm -hmm. you'll always be, that's where sibling rivalry comes in. Yeah. Think about this, from the first family in all of the Bible, first book of the Bible, the family unit has sibling rivalry because 
these brothers are fighting about their role on the team. So we got to get good yeah. at loving the team, being a part of, of the team, being satisfied with our role. So, so I'm a little bit perplexed here. Okay. Because the world says you have to have your own YouTube channel, you have yeah. to have your own podcast, sure. you need to be you know, an influencer, you need to be famous on TikTok, and if you're not, then you're nobody, and there's likes, and the likes mean you're good, or the likes mean you're bad. And so how how do you get comfortable? There's no I in team. Yep, I there's get no that. I in team. But how do you get comfortable being on a team when the world says you should be, you know, yeah, on the cover? Right. Well, it, it's interesting. Uh, one of my favorite leaders, Gary Clark in Hillsong, London, he told me one time, in a narcissistic society, narcissism wins. Mm -hmm. So I think we've got to understand whose culture mm -hmm. are we in? Are we in culture? Because if I'm in culture, it's about TikTok, YouTube, and likes. And But in kingdom culture, mm. once you receive Jesus, mm. this kingdom's all about others. You're dealing truth. It's actually not about me. Yeah. I'm in a different kingdom. Yeah. Now, I'm not in heaven yet, but this kingdom, all those dynamics are at play in my life here. Mm. So in this kingdom, it's about serving, loving, and the disciples are part of a group. Mm. They go start the church. I think it's so important that we go, you know what? I want to be a part of the story and I want to be a part of what God's doing. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to have these disagreements mm -hmm. that a lot of time are really more about me than them. And then I, lo I lose the ability to be a part of what God's doing mm -hmm. in my local church, in my connect group, in my family. Yeah. We can have conflict. Yeah. Conflict is inevitable. But how do you deal with conflict? You got to have resolution. You gotta have the ability to go like, hey, we have a disagreement here. Mm. Let's talk it out. Yeah. Let's work it out. Let's try and sure. it's not just talk to talk. Let's listen before mm -hmm. we talk. Mm -hmm. So many of us, our biggest problem is we don't know how to play well with others. Mm. We don't know how to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. And so we conquer self mm. to not just good, good with people, mm -hmm. but to be great on the team. Yeah. You know that person. Uh, they just it's like they're worth 10. They're one person, they're worth 10. Yeah. Because their presence adds so much yeah. value. I want to be that kind of person. Uh. That's what we should be. So do you ever find yourself saying stuff like, can you believe that guy just flipped me off? He's the one who cut me off in traffic. Or... Maybe about social media. I cannot believe that they just clapped back on Facebook about me. Who do they think they are? Or maybe at work. There's no way that I'm covering for them. It's about time they pull their own weight. Any of it sound familiar? Yeah, I know. I wasn't spying on you, but God was. And he was just revealing it to my heart and maybe tweaking me up at the same time. The problem is we, we're not supposed to clap back with what they deserve, which we usually is, think is a little bit ratchet, but what it takes to get the point across. So what do we do if we can't do that? Well, Matthew 7, 12 says, whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Okay, this is the big boy stuff. And David and I, we were having lunch the other day with this guy who was in prison for nine years. I know that sounds long, but he was supposed to be there for 14 years. And he found God while he was in prison. You know, he said he had time to read the Bible while he was there, which he hadn't had time for before. <laughs> he said, I really got to know him. And once he got out, which was a miracle because he was supposed to be there for five more years, there was this guy on the street walking by and he saw him. He started yelling choice words and saying things right in front of his family, like rude. The man with the newfound freedom was just about to respond, was just about to tell that guy what for. I've been in prison, you know I can handle this. You know, just a traffic finger, a choice word or two to put that guy in his place. But just in the nick of time, he felt this check in his spirit. Wait, what would God want me to do? I guess all that Bible reading in prison got into his heart. He said, I don't know what kind of day that guy had, what wounded him in the past. Maybe he's afraid of something in his future. Maybe this isn't as much about me, but about him and where he's at. This guy who got out of prison what kind of prison we need out of today? A prison of depression, prison of fear, prison of relationships, prison of self, lack of self-confidence. He passed on the opportunity to react and he passed a test. 
Galatians 5 says, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out! You are not consumed by one another. If we're strong in the Lord, we can measure our response. If we're weak in the Lord and strong in tiredness, bleeding from empty, strong in attitude, chances are we'll think about what we did later and not feel really good about it. The questions we can ask ourselves is this when we're working with people. If the positions were reversed, what would I want them to do for me? Well, I certainly hope Luffy is listening because she she needs this. And I told you that's why we're being a little silly today because like the spoonful of sugar and oh, medicine. But here's the thing about medicine, it gets you well. Yeah. Sometimes our bodies are sick, sometimes our souls are sick, hmm. sometimes our hearts are sick. And that's what we're doing today is we're working on getting you better. What is hmm. the medicine? It's the word of God. And, and Chad has packaged it so beautifully and help I work with people. Chad, is there any way you would pray for people before we yeah, go Yeah, absolutely. God, I just thank you right now for every person that has been wounded by someone in their family or a friend. And right now, we just thank you, Jesus, that you are a healing God. Yeah. Heal our wounds, our frustrations, our disappointments. And God, we pray that you would heal us to free us so we could love others. Let us love people the way you love people. God, if you sent your son for others, help us go on the rescue mission with you. We love you and we give you our lives today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said together, amen. amen. I'm telling you what, I was trying to take notes, but I was holding the dog and talking to Chad. So I have to rewatch this. And if you want to rewatch it, it's going to be on the YouTube channel. So you can go to the Crank Ministries YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. So ding, we show up in your mailbox once a week and you can share it. I know this helped me a lot today. I know it helped you a lot today. And that's what our show does. I know a lot of people get paid to be on TV. We do a lot of paying to be on TV and we can only help people because you help us help people. If the show has been a blessing to you, would you consider helping us help more people? I know, five bucks, 10 bucks, 25, 50, 100, whatever. A lot of people wanna just help and we're really thankful for it. So you can just text us at 77977 and help us keep helping people. I saw a testimony the other day and it just really moved my heart. And it was talking about somebody who was really in a lost place, mm. sitting in their room. They didn't know what they were gonna do. And there's this show that comes on with this obnoxious girl. I don't know who they were talking about. This obnoxious girl who was like a little loud and a little zany. And this person was actually a guy. Mm. And he said, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you. I thought you were another gospel chick and I kind of tuned you out. But then I heard what you were saying. Mm. And now you're one of my favorite shows. Wait a minute. This medicine that Chad's given and the sugar mm. that he's packaging it and the people that you have on. So thanks so much for helping us. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for subscribing to YouTube and let's go help more people together. Right now, we gotta go. The segues are sensational. The segues could be the money maker of the whole TV program. <laughs> hey, look at how- You can't teach that kind of stuff. <laughs> you can't teach segues.